there are many things being expressed these days. Um, and, you know, I posted the first video I posted that really gained traction was one that was about kind of uh, calendaring software and looking for calendaring software uh, to help try to figure out the actual days that um, the Bible describes and feast days and things because, I, you know, the calendars are all off. So trying to figure those things out. And um, so there's some interesting dates and cross correlations and things to look at. And I was highlighting them and put them all on a whiteboard and so forth. Some people went bonkers and said, oh, you're predicting dates and things like that. And some people just stressed and hair on fire over that, which obviously I was not predicting any dates. If I were going to predict a date, at least a date that I want the rapture to happen, right now, today, you know, uh, any second now, that if I could set a date when I I know the, I would like the Lord to return. But um, although we, we can know the season, we, we can't know the day or, or the hour. And that even matches with the Hebraism that's associated with Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah. Is it's the feast that no man knows the day or the hour, and it's a two-day feast for a reason. So that word, that wording matches. We can know this season. Jesus castigated the Pharisees for not knowing the day of their visitation. In other words, that he is the Messiah and he's there. And he fit the prophecies that they should have been looking for. And he fit the timing that Daniel's 70 weeks um, predicted. And they should have been looking, and they weren't. They can predict the weather. They know what the red sky in the morning means, but they did not recognize the time of their visitation. So they should have known the season. And we, I think, on some visceral level, Believers today know the season. Um, we all kind of feel it in the air, if I can put it that way. I don't want. I don't mean to sound new agey. I think you just sense the tension in the air and the tension among the saints. What's going on in the world? The evil that's spreading in the world, and we've always had evil. There's always been evil in the world, but it seems to be broader and um, have the entire earth more saturated. Than any other time in history, you've always had, uh, you know, there's been um, evil in the Middle East, evil in Babylon, evil in Egypt, evil in Rome, evil in Europe, and evil in the Soviet Union, evil in the United States, and and so now we we kind of we can look at the world and we can say, eh, pretty much evil everywhere, and it's it's bonkers, and the wrong people globally are. Um, in charge, and we just see evil tyranny everywhere. Um, there's a, a a song you might have heard of that recently um, broke from um, a nobody. Anybody knew he is somebody because we're all somebody, but nobody knew him. He came out of left field, and a lot of angst in the song. and And I can't condone some of the language in the song or whatever, but I understand the frustration, and I. I wholly can appreciate the message, the evil in the world and, and the people in D.C., the politicians, um, the politicians, the um, rich men, north of Richmond, uh, you know, is, is the song. And um, how do you become a, a politician? You're a career politician making government pay, but yet by the time you retire, you're a multimillionaire. Hmm. And, and they're the ones who are controlling the purse strings in the country. So people are aggra aggravated and frustrated about where their money is going, how it's being spent, how it's being misspent, uh, the things their money is going to. But, and yet when they get their paycheck where that money comes out for taxation, it goes to things they don't agree with and there's a pittance left. A statistic I heard the other day was something on the order of, um, in uh, I don't know if it's in since the current administration or in the last year or what have you, um, I'm just going to say, let's just look at, it's enough to say that in since this administration, that the average um, pay loss for every adult American, um, I think probably since this administration, the average is about $6,000 per year. 
that's a chunk of change. Now, that's an average. I mean, some people, the relative loss is more, and some people, the relative loss is less. But you get the picture. That's a chunk of change. So people are aggravated and frustrated. And I just want to offer some encouragement. We know the end is near. Is near. Um, the time is close because the scriptures gave us um, several signs to watch for how we know that we're getting toward the end. And I, I do have a video or two on that that you should look at. But um, some of the signs from the New Testament, just Reader's Digest condensed. Uh, I did a sermon. Um, I, I did a sermon at, at church a few weeks ago called "All These Things." So if you look back a half a dozen videos or so, um, it, it, trying to get a jam a whole lot into one hour. But um, the summation is that the signs, so many of the signs that Jesus offered in his all of it discourse, all had to do with Israel. Um, prophetically, Israel dropped off the map. Um, after the first century. They were scattered among the nations, among all the countries, which prophetically they were supposed to do. Then nothing. I can't think of any Bible prophecies concerning Israel at all about that time period. The next prophecies we had in the Old Testament about that time period uh, that was supposed to come true after the first century was regathering and restoration back into the land and then there's going to be persecution and there's going to be judgment but there's also going to be judgment of the nations but don't worry i'm going to restore you fully back into the land this remnant though of believers you will turn you will repent you come back to me and you you will live in a land of milk and honey basically so it brings us all the way to this this last generation this generation that we're in right now i mean israel was literally off the map until 1948 right and they're, they're, they don't have their full restoration into the land yet, but that process has begun. begun. They, they weren't even Israel until 1948. So we've got, we're in this last generation where these things, in the Old Testament, Joel and other places, um, refer to as that day. And in that day and in those days, and it's this generation where all these things take place in a rapid sequence that all lead up through um, judgment upon the earth, and the Lord coming back, second coming, and then him establishing his kingdom. That's all the sweep of, of history. And it's, we're in that time right now. But we also read about the uptick of evil in the last days. But I want to read this psalm to you, and I want to encourage you. And this is God's opinion on the matter. It's not his only opinion on the matter. And I might throw a couple more passages up here. Psalm 37, if you want to follow along, and I'm going to be reading this time from the New King James because I'm familiar with it. I'm liking the New Legacy Standard Bible a lot, and I like the ESV. I, I, I love the, the old King James Bible, too, because of the, the poetic sound of it, but a lot of people can't understand it when you read it to them. It's like listening to Shakespearean language. So, Psalm 37. Do not fret because of evildoers. Nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. Yes, they're getting money and they're succeeding in life, right? Don't envy that. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Now, what that means is he's not going to give you whatever you want. You can, this isn't the Make-A-Wish Foundation and he's going to give you a fancy car because that's the desire of your heart or new home. No, he will put in you the desires in your heart that you should have. If you delight yourself in the Lord and you follow him and you dwell in him, he'll help you with your heart condition. It's easy to get wrapped up in the world and the things of the world. So he's not offering to give you things in your life. He will give you the desires in your heart that you should have that please him. Commit your way to the Lord, verse 5. Uh, the word there is, is roll off onto. I like that visual imagery. Roll off onto the way of the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. Um, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. When is this righteousness and justice ultimately going to be fulfilled? The second coming. We're all going to have our glorified bodies. He's going to bring on the kingdom on the earth and we're going to enter his presence um, for eternity and it's going to be glorious. So he's going to bring it about. Trust him that he's going to do it. 
Rest the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. It's easy to get really worked up. Cease from anger. Forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off, in verse 9. But those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the earth. It'll be a new earth, by the way. It's not going to be this mess. We know it's going to restore everything. A new heaven, a new earth. It's going to be restored. Yet for a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. I could use an abundance of peace. Verse 12, the wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with his teeth. So the Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and have bent the bow, making war, right? To cast down the poor and the needy. To slay those who are upright of conduct. Their sword shall enter their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord, like the splendor of the meadows, shall vanish. Into smoke they shall vanish away. Verse 21, the wicked borrows and does not repay, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. For those blessed by him shall inherit the earth, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread, for he is ever merciful and lends, and his descendants are blessed. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever, but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom and his tongue talks of justice. The law of God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he's judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a native green tree. Yet he passed away, and behold, he was no more. Indeed, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the blameless man and observe the upright, for the future of that man is peace, but the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off, but the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble or tribulation, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them, and he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Meditate on that. Listen to this again, or go and read it, which is even better. Subscribe, and you'll get notices if I post more. The Lord might lay on my heart to read some more hope-ridden or hope-riddled passages uh, and cautions and things that we might need, and I might just do that. Um, try not to stress. Rest in the Lord, as the scriptures say. God bless.